uh, move a little quickly, but we're going to talk about the technical aspects of correction, which is basically how do we meet the uh, uh, goals to the surgery? And oh, I'm hitting the wrong button. Where's my button? There it is. Okay. So the goals of surgery primarily are deformity correction, mobility, durability, and being pain-free. Those are the most important aspects of surgery. So you really want it to last over time, maintain as much motion as you can, and get back to doing the activities you want. So how do we do that? And this is kind of the tools in the toolbox, right? These are scary looking. But, um, and you don't use each one for every situation, right? So, so there's certain situations where, where the tools are more appropriate than other situations. And that's kind of what we're going to review really quickly. The way I always think of it is you break down the surgery into parts. There's exposure uh, that's how, uh, getting to the part of the spine that we want to. There's flexibility and reducibility. So what we want to do is we have a stiff spine. We want to be able to straighten it out and put it in the positions we want. And how do we achieve that in a better way? There's fixation. Fixation is a fancy word for the screws or the hooks or the wires or the cables that we use. And then there's how we get the spine. After doing all of the work, how do we get the spine to the shape we want? And others are other things that we might do to optimize correction um, or the aesthetic outcome, which things like thoracoplasty and stuff like that. So this is a curve, it's a big curve, and then we got these cool now 3D imaging technology. It really gives us a good sense of, of how we can optimize the deformity correction, put it in the positions we want it to be. And it really starts to help us planning the surgery in a better way and getting from this to this. Now, here's the problem with uh, technique and things like that. No per surgeon does the surgery the same. Now, these are all... Uh, rods that were bent and measured by very experienced surgeons in the harm study group. So if you look at them, these are the, the, the guys that I would send my own kids to. And they all bent these rods and none of them are the same. Okay. So, so there's, again, even though we're talking about techniques, there's a huge variation in how people apply those. Ultimately for you guys, the important thing is the results and the outcome. So exposure, how do we get to the spine? Um, and that's usually the most common way is through the back, the posterior aspect of the spine. I stayed away from pic specific pictures of, of blood and gore, but basically coming in through the, 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 the back and being able to access it. Um, or other options are it being able to come through the front. Now each one has its advantages and disadvantages. We've moved a lot away from coming in anteriorly, even though this is a good tool for certain situations for fusions because of a number of problems that are associated with coming anteriorly. So the most, most patients tend to come post, uh, for most patients we tend to come posteriorly for. The other thing is, is how do we achieve flexibility? It's something called an osteotomy where we cut your bone. Now there's really multiple ways to do it. It really depends on the severity of the, uh, the curve and the rigidity of the curve. And in most patients, we do what's called a, a PCO or a ponte osteotomy where we remove the joints in the back. But in some patients, we remove the, a whole vertebrae or multiple vertebrae to be able to achieve the, the correction very safely. And this is a good picture of what a ponte osteotomy consists of. And this is probably for everybody who's had an operation at least out of this group uh, in Miami uh, probably has had multiple ones of these done to achieve the correction. Okay, the next question becomes is how do we fix the spine? How do we secure the spine so we can, when we do the correction, we can bring the spine in a safe way to the position we want it? And there are a number of options for this. The workhorse and the, probably the best option for it is something called a pedicle screw. Now traditionally in the past we've used wires and hooks, but the wires and the hooks tend to grab only the back part of the spine and it doesn't allow you, afford you as much control over how we correct the spine. So the nice thing about the screws is if this is the center of rotation, the point at which the spine rotates, this lets you grab the whole spine to be able to, to really bring it to the position that you really want it to be. Once we've got these screws and the fixation in, we can do multiple things to achieve the correction. And that is, one of them is simple, simple compression and distraction. Squeeze the vertebrae together, push them apart. Remember, a lot of what we do is mechanics and carpentry, right? Like it's, it's positioning things in space. And so, so that's part of what we want to do. So oftentimes on the concave side, on the inside of the curve, 
a lot of what happens is the spine starts to spread apart a little bit on the outside of the curve, if not compressing, but the, it, it, it tends to shorten or stay about the same length. The other part of that, what we want to do is when we try to do that, we want to bend the rods in a way that it optimizes and bring, uh, uh, creates the correction we want it to achieve. So, so depending on how you bend the rod, it will, uh, will help you accomplish your goals in one way or the other. It really depends on what your goals are for that particular patient. And that is why when I, we went back and looked at those x-rays, when we went back and looked at those uh, the rod bends, everybody had a different rod bend because everybody wants to achieve the goals in a slightly different way. But in the end, as long as it meets the, strate or the, the overall goals for the patient, how you tactically got there really doesn't matter as much. Cantilever correction. Cantilever correction is, is you kind of grab the spine from one side and push it over to the rod on, on the other side. And that's usually for the, we use that in kind of more for the, like the second rod technique or sometimes oftentimes with kyphosis where, the, where there's an abnormal bend to the spine or in where we've done things like what's called a vertebral column resection where we've removed the whole vertebrae. We'll use the cantilever correction to help us achieve the, the necessary uh, deformity correction in a safe way. So we want to try to, when we do, uh, achieve these, we want to try to do these in an e as even way as possible to put at least amount of uh, pressure on the screws and we want it pretty much spread throughout the construct. The other part of that is axial rotation, right? Remember, we've talked a lot about how uh, scoliosis is a 3D problem, right? It's a problem front, back, side to side, but there's also the rib hump. And a lot of times what you guys notice is this and the difference up front. And so how do we correct that? That's really the, the important part of what you want to achieve. And there's a couple of ways we can do that. But one of them is, uh, was described by uh, uh, a surgeon in Korea is vertebral body derotation, and that's where we essentially grab the vertebrae using our screws and twist the vertebrae back into the position we want it to be at. And that really, it sounds like we're pretty rough with it, and it's actually, when you look at the procedure, it's kind of uh, not the most aesthetically pleasing thing to do, but it works great. And for you guys, what it does is, of all the things that tend to bother you, um, is uh, the rib hump is probably the biggest one and the difference that it causes anteriorly, that's the one that makes, you, uh, makes the biggest difference for you guys in terms of outcome. Uh, and then here you see an excellent derotation because A, you don't see the ribs pointing out on one side or the other and both screws are pointing forward and that's really what you want to achieve. And then here's a, a good picture of where that's been achieved. Thank you.